Hello, and welcome to Japanese Craft Beer Reviews. Uh, today we're going to look at a beer that is kind of special. Uh, the brewery is located in Belgium, and it's kind of a classic brewery. Uh, uh, it was uh, Michael Jackson, uh, the British writer, not the pop star. Uh, Michael Jackson uh, sort of discovered Belgian beer for the for the uh, for the British and the Americans uh, in the 1970s, 60s, and 70s when he visited there and started writing about them. And this is one of the breweries that really, really uh, impressed him. It's called Rodenbach, and we're going to look at four different beers from Rodenbach. And uh, uh, the first one will be the classic Roden Rodenbach, uh, and then we'll look at the Grand Cru. And then we'll look at a kind of special one called Alexander, and then finally uh, a, a fruit, a fruit a brew, a beer called Fruitage. And uh, uh, but very briefly uh, about the uh, Rodenbach Brewery, uh, it was the first Rodenbach. Uh, you notice the name doesn't sound particularly Belgian. Uh, and in fact, the first Rodenbach came from Germany uh, as a military doctor during the time when. Uh, uh, Belgium was ruled by uh, uh, Austrian Empire, and uh, uh, they kind of set down and you know set and made roots in Belgium. And then the brewery was uh, developed in uh, 1820 or bought by the family in 1820, uh, and it's located in West Flanders in the town of Roselaer. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it exactly. R O E S A L E. I'll show you a map here of it. Um, and the brewery stayed in the family until 1998 when it was sold to Palm. And now it apparently is owned by a group called the Swinkle Family Brewers. And uh, they make a variety of beers, not too many. Uh, but again, the, the first one is the Rodenbach Original, uh, uh, the, which is now called Classic. And then uh, Grand Cru uh, at 6.4 percent, and then uh, a number of vintage beers that they make. Uh, they put out in limited editions there, and Von de Cereal, which is a 10 percenter, quite strong, and uh, Character Rouge, which is uh, um, uh, macerated with uh, cherries uh, after some aging, and uh, Alexander, and then Fruitage, and we're going to look at four of those now. Uh, what they're most famous for is uh, the use of oak foders, which are not cask, but they're huge, uh, called tuns, uh, T-U-N, um, and they're massive. The, the uh, biggest one, or the average one, hold uh, like 4,700 gallons of beer. And uh, the beer is primarily, I think, fermented in, in uh, steel first and then aged in these uh, oak folders, and here are some pictures of them. They're absolutely huge, and Rodenbach is the only brewer that relies completely on those folders to to uh, produce, to age their beers. Uh, some of them are 150 years old, and they have, here's a trivia question for you, 294 of them uh, in the brewery currently. Um, and they became famous over the years for not only that, for use of these massive photos to, uh, to, uh, uh, to age their beers, but also supplying yeast to places like Vesverleteren and Dedala. So they did a, you know, a lot of work uh, with other breweries as well. The oak photos, uh, uh, of course, what they do is these are uh, used over and over and over, and of course over the years they've developed their own uh, varieties of microflora, uh, primarily Pediococcus and in some cases Brett, Brettanomyces. Um, and the Pediococcus will give a kind of tart, uh, sort of astringent note to the beer. And uh, so let's look at four of these beers in turn from Rodenbach, uh, a very special brewery and I'm really happy to to uh, review them now for the first time. And here is the first one we will look at. It is called Rodenbach Classic and it used to be simply called uh, Rodenbach. Uh, that was the basic, uh, the, the, the original flagship beer for them. And this is the new name. Um, this is a sour, classified as a sour Flemish ale, uh, Flanders red, sometimes called an Old Bruin. Uh, 
and it is brewed again by Rodenbach, owned by Swinkle Family Brewers. 5.2% uh, alcohol by volume, 30 international bittering units. And uh, these bottles are, this is kind of a new form here, and it, they used to have only large format bottles, and now they have it in these smaller, these are 250 milliliter bottles. This cost 358 yen where I bought it, or I would say around maybe $2.80 US, something like that. On rate beer, there were uh, 2,405 ratings when I checked, and the average was 3.52 uh, out of 5. 84 percentile for all beers on rate beer, and 48 for its style, which is sour Flemish ale. And untapped, there were 103,758 ratings, and the average is a little bit lower, 3.46. Uh, now, this beer is a blend of, of young beer and aged beer. So it's 75% uh, young beer, which was uh, fermented in steel tanks, and 25% uh, old beer, which is aged for two years in the oak casks, the folders. Uh, and the average aging they claim on their website is uh, thus six months. And they have a sourness level uh, or a scale of five, and this is 2.5, so right in the middle. All right. Okay, shall we give this one a go? Looking forward to, to uh, trying this. I've had this before, but it's been a few years uh, since I've seen it, and it suddenly appeared in Japan at the Liquor Mountain chain of stores. Let's give this one a go. Okay, it is a nice kind of ruby red sort of color. Uh, it's not appearing that way to you, it is to me. Uh, and you can see pretty substantial carbonation rising there. And a nice little tan head, about a finger or so, kind of spongy. Oh my, oh my, yeah. Okay, this is what I remember. Yeah, wow. Okay, nice, nice, rich, kind of almost spritzy sort of tartness uh, rising up in the aroma. Uh, sort of rich, dark fruit, but something pickled as well. Maybe like pickled prunes or raisins. The, even just the aroma is quite refreshing. Very definitely you get the lactic sort of note that uh, the pediococcus will provide. Uh, mm, flavors the same. Uh, the rich kind of red red fruit with something like uh, maybe plums or or uh, light cherries and maybe something more like sauerkraut mixed in with it. it has a very nice tartness on the tongue light astringency not terribly strong um, this one is kind of the kind of the moderate characteristics for the style uh, but it's considered you know kind of the sort of the benchmark. Uh, it's not so extreme. Mm. So again, it's a, a blend of young and aged. Yeah. So it tastes kind of fresh. Um, uh, doesn't have quite the complex character that an older, you know, much uh, a completely older beer, which we'll look at yeah, in a minute. Uh, or in our next video. Mm. Yeah, um, I think as this warms up, it's going to change character, uh, but I don't have time for, for that right now, but we'll let this sit for a while. It's really, really a, a lovely beer. Uh, not, not the kind of sour that will knock your socks off, you know, which uh, like a lot of American craft brewers are making now, but uh, just the a clearly solid kind of mid-range, again, benchmark for the style, uh, red ale, sour red ale. Mm. Mm. Great. Okay, 
So once again, uh, this is called Rodenbach Classic, and it is a, as I say here, a red, it's red, it's ripened, it's refreshing, uh, and absolutely it is that here. So it's a Flanders Red Ale, 5.2%, 3 uh, 30 international bittering units. Uh, and uh, if you happen to see this, if you've never had uh, Rodenbach, you've got to give them a go. Uh, they're quite a different experience uh, for the average beer drinker, and I hope you will. Cheers, take care, bye-bye.